I just thank God, for, you know, I just thank God for this song. I thank God that uh, this song could have been the whole message. <laughs> but I just thank God. I thank God for it. And, uh, you know, God has me in a, he has me in a real uncomfortable place, you know, right now. And uh, I say that because I had to wait on this word all the way up until 3 a.m. this morning before God was finished with giving it to me. And I just think, you know, because it ties so well with our Sunday school, you know, that when God sends you to do something, he's going to prepare you to do it. And I was uncomfortable because I wasn't, I never felt fully prepared. Like I said, all the way up until 3 a.m. when he was finally done with me. And I just, uh, just want to praise God from whom all blessings flow. And I give an honor to God. I give an honor to pastor and co-pastor, you know, just for this opportunity to speak the word of God on their platform. You know, I give an honor to my wife. I give an honor to, uh, to my dad, you know, it's Father's Day and my dad is here. I just thank God for my parents and give an honor to Elder and Evangelist Johnson and that song uh, that was just playing can't run can't hide i got that song from elder johnson you know had it not been for him i would have never heard that song so uh <laughs> and some of us you know we try to run and we try to hide from god but where can we go <laughs> you know that song is from lee williams and i call him the great musical storyteller because that's exactly what he was doing he was telling that story and, you know, and that just, you know, helps to give us this message today. And I just, I thank God. So let us uh, just bow our heads in prayer really quickly. I just, the only Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. We thank you for this opportunity to, to hear your word and have it expound on each and every one of us, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you be in the midst, that whatever you want said, be said, Lord Jesus, and that you use me as you see fit. We ask you to also look on the bereaved part of our church, Lord Jesus, in all the different areas that they're in. And we just ask that you be a comfort to them. And we thank you for all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So <clears throat> I asked myself earlier this week, I asked myself this question, why do I believe in God? And I answered myself with what I thought was one of the most compelling things to have come out of my own mouth. I said to myself, I believe the word of God is transformative. And transformative, what does that mean? It means to cause a change in something or someone. When we look at Romans 12 and 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So God's will is for us to be transformed toward the good, acceptable, and perfect, and not to conform to the deterioration of the world. For, for any change to happen, in, in any of our lives, there has to be a present state, a state that we're at right now that you, <clears throat> that you want to change. You know, so you have your present condition and that change is going to give you a new condition. So as our scripture unfolds, you will see that, you know, our present state or our present status may be sin or sinful, but the change leads to righteousness. And I'll give you an example of what, you know, changes can occur before we get to our scripture for today. I was, I was, uh, I was having a very difficult week last week. You know, I was very angry. I was hurt, but I said nothing about it. I kept all these feelings on the inside. I kept them to myself. You know, I'm thinking the only person that's ever going to be bothered by this stuff is me. So I kept it all to myself. Or so I thought. I thought I was going to be the only person bothered by it. But other people, they get affected when you're not being the person they know you to be. So I had to do something with this anger that I was feeling all week. So finally, I got fed up with being as angry as I was. And I prayed to God and, and, I, and I told him that I was not going to eat until he gave me an answer on what to do. 
And the very next day, I read scripture regarding forgiveness. That if we forgive others, we would be forgiven of our own sins. So my prayer was answered. I mean, only hours later from when I said I wasn't going to eat, my prayer was answered. So I started, I sat there in my car and I just started forgiving people while I was alone in my car. I just started just calling out names, forgiving them for all the, the anger that I felt on the inside. And, and as I was saying it, the more people I forgave, the more that anger began to just melt away. The word of God had to change my heart and heart to a soft one. And often we wonder why we have to interact with hard people. <laughs> and it is to change us us into softer individuals and this takes a lot of practice which is why you know patience is a huge part of one of the fruit of the spirit because it's going to take a lot of practice the hard people we deal with is for our benefit and that's something that I, I i think a lot of people don't even understand or they don't get that the hard people we have to deal with is for our benefit because they help us to change towards God's perfect will. And if we go right back to that Romans 12 and two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So as my heart condition shifted from anger and resentment and pain towards forgiveness, so did the emphasis of this message change. So as God guided me throughout the week, I became more in tune to what he really needed me to say, what he really needed me to get across. That change comes by our faith in him and in his son, Jesus, and in his word of truth, this gospel, this Bible that we're supposed to want to read daily. That's where change comes from. So I must uh, apologize to a lot of people because people have been asking me all week, you know, what was the message supposed to be about, you know, and <laughs> the message changed. And I, and I got this uh, from uh, Dr. Byron Lennon because he says this, he says, the sermon is subject to change based on the movement of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And I thank Dr. Lennon for that because, you know, he's the first person that I can remember saying something that was similar. So I borrowed that from him. You know, this servant has changed based on the movement of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to title this, if we need a title, Warning Lights. Warning Lights. And we're going to we're going to start with Jonah and then we're going to go to Romans. We, we, we may get to Genesis, we may get to Matthew. Regardless, you know, the word of God is going to be spoken. And our theme for this 42nd church anniversary is change the world. And it came from Daniel 12 and 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that <clears throat> and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars. And what that means to me is our job is to shine a light that turns others to righteousness. But it made me think, and God put it on my spirit, not all lights are white lights like the stars. We have some green lights. Green means go. Red lights. Red means stop. Yellow means caution. And then we have flashing orange, one, orange lights. And we call those warning lights or hazard. You know, in this message, that's exactly what this message is. It's a warning light. Because we don't celebrate sin. I don't celebrate my own sin. I don't celebrate the sin of others. I don't condone it. And I don't condemn those that do sin. We all sin and we all fall short, but God is merciful, even to warn us ahead of time. Think about anyone that was warned before. Just think about anybody that was warned. 
Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, you, you got Lot's family. It was warned not to look back as they left. Lot's wife turned and looked back. Nineveh was warned by Jonah to come back to the Lord. They were frightened so much that the king ordered the entire nation to fast. You know, you think about all these things as warnings. So, lastly, when uh, the Pharisees brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus, he gave her a warning. He said, I don't condemn you or your sin, but go and sin no more. So, Pastor, you can check me on this. Am I being truthful so far? Because you can always check me. If I say something out of line, you, you, you just jump right on in there. Yes. So this message has a warning attached to it. To all those that celebrate sin, it's a warning. So the reason I've been bothered so, so long this week is I've been trying to sugarcoat this all week trying to soften it and make it sound not so harsh. But God has the power to change your sin from unrighteousness to righteousness. But he needs our repentance to do it. And I repeat, he needs our repentance before anything can be changed. So, but first, we're going to stop with our, our start with our scripture. And it's going to come from Jonah's chapter 1. Verses 1 and 2, and then it's going to be Jonah chapter 3, 4 through 10. And chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittia, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Jonah sent a warning to the people of Nineveh because of their wickedness or their sin was so great, and God was tired of it. <laughs> Jonah went, but just like that song said, he didn't want to go. And anybody I know the scripture knows that Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. He hopped on a boat to go in a different direction. So God took away all of his options. So Jonah had to go. He had to go where he was told to go and preach to Nineveh and this is what happened. We're going to go to Jonah chapter 3, verses 4 through 10. And it says, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered himself with sackcloth, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. And that's Jonah chapter 3, is verses uh, 4 through 10. So, the sin was so great in this city that even the animals had to fast. They changed based on the warning that was issued by Jonah. They repented, but the king still had this question. He said, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And if you read further on, it says, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way 
and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So God saw that they changed from wickedness, and his anger for their sin subsided. That's what happened. And the reason is God doesn't like sin. I don't know where anybody is in their lives, but he doesn't like sin, any sin. And the state of the world right now is rampant with sin. So you go back and you look at Jonah chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. It just says wickedness but it doesn't depict what type of sin or what type of wickedness they were talking about. And that's going to lead us right into our, our next scripture. It's going to be uh, in Romans, Romans chapter one, because this is going to give us, you know, a depiction of what type of, what, what rampant sin looks like. But the message, the message here is very simple. Sincere repentance from sin is the type of change we need. Sincere repentance from sin is the type of change we need in the church and outside of the church. In the church and outside of the church. So we go to Romans 1 and 8. And uh, this is Paul speaking. Paul is speaking to the church at Rome. And he says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. So the church at Rome, they were known by their faith, that church. Known by their faith. It says it, their, their faith was known throughout the world. Everybody heard about how faithful this church was at Rome. Still, Paul has a warning to Rome about God's wrath towards sin. And we go to verses uh, 18 through 32. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, which means they all know better. They're, they don't have any excuses. So because of that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and to creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed who is blessed for who is blessed forever amen for this cause god gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of a woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense for their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, 
malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And what does all that mean? They know better. They know what sin does. And they, have, they find pleasure in being as sinful as they was. All those things we just read off. They found pleasure in being that disgraceful to God. These sins that we're talking about, sins of homosexuality, fornication, unrighteousness, lying, envy, murder. These are the sins that Paul warned about 2,000 years ago. And I hope you hear me. These are the sins Paul warned about 2,000 years ago. And almost 2,000 years before Paul, there was Sodom and Gomorrah, which was destroyed because of their sin. And our present day is 2,000 years after Paul's message to the Romans. And what state is the world in now? I would say it's in the same type of state. The same type of sinfulness. And they say it's Pride Month. Pride Month. A month to recognize and celebrate sin. The message, the warning light God is giving me is we do not celebrate sin. Not any form of it. Sincere repentance is needed for all... <clears throat> For all forms of sin, regardless if it's a sexual sin, if it's lying, if it's cheating, if it's stealing, or if it's cursing. The world right now, the world we live in, is in danger of hellfire. We talk about Jonah, and Jonah said that, you know, when he was in the belly of that fish, that he felt like he was in the belly of hell. He prayed all night to get out of it. Our prayers. Our prayers need to be heard right now. Like I said, they call this Pride Month. A celebration of sin. Can we really sit back and accept that? Now, I don't condemn anyone, but sin is sin. And this is the state of the world that we're in right now. It's like a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. That was, was destroyed. That was an example of how God feels about sin. He doesn't like it. Nineveh was spared when they repented, but eventually they went back to sinful deeds. Paul warns us about unrighteousness and what it does. And this is something, you know, that bothers me. It's Pride Month should be one of the biggest outreach months for the church to that community. The problem is sin is rampant even in some churches. God has some lost sheep even among his own fold. The church, churches that we call home, he's got lost sheep that are among us trying these same types of sexual sin. And I have it. I had sexual sin that I had to repent from and pray for forgiveness. Not to have the wrath of God, you know, at my own doorstep. Our message is one of repentance for all unrighteousness. And this is what we should be telling people. Repentance from unrighteousness. Jesus died to give us this opportunity, this salvation from sin. And when you look at Romans 6 and 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And what does that mean? You get paid 
for sin. And that pay comes with a debt that you can't repay. You're in debt so much that you can't repay it. So Jesus gave his life to pay that debt and offers us a free gift of salvation and eternal life. So this is the a warning light that's flashing for all those that prefer to, to live in and celebrate their sin. You can keep going down that path if you want to. We all have choices to make. You can keep deciding to head towards trouble. Or you can turn back towards God. Like scripture says, the just shall live by faith. The righteousness of God is revealed, revealed by our faith. That's Romans 1 and 17. Again, this is called Pride Month. And I just want to remind everybody, don't look down on these that are afflicted with sexual sin. Because some of us had had, you know, similar afflictions. But this is a month that they dedicated to the LGBTQIA plus community. And the motto, their mission statement, this mission statement of this community is, and I had to look it up because I didn't even know what it was myself. It, the, the mission statement is the promotion of self-affirmation, dignity, equality, and increased visibility of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people as a social group, pride as opposed to shame and the social stigma is the predominant outlook that bolsters most LGBTQ rights and movements. A month dedicated to recognizing and accepting unrighteous behavior without shame. Do you think this is similar to Jonah's message to Nineveh? Do you think it's similar to Paul's warning to Rome? Our warning to the rest of the world should be, God does not condone sin. Not mine or anybody else's. So in John, in John chapter 8, you know, the Pharisees, they, and I say, they teased Jesus. The Pharisees teased Jesus that the punishment for sexual sin was stoning. They were teasing him. They were trying to get at him, see what he was going to say. So Jesus didn't condone the sin, but he also didn't condemn the sinner. He said to the crowd, ye without sin cast the first stone. So I don't condemn this community, but the message is as Jesus's message was to that same woman that was caught in sexual sin. Jesus said to her, if they don't condemn you, neither do I, but go and sin no more. That's the warning. Don't continue in this thing. You see what they want to do to you when you continue in this thing. They want to stone you. So we don't want to continue in sin. Go and sin no more should be the message. Repent from all forms of unrighteousness, behavior, unrighteous behavior and come back to God. Like that song says, you can't run from God. You can't hide. There is no hiding place big enough for that you can put your sin that he won't see that it's there. You can't hide sin. The earth is his and the fullness thereof. We have both the opportunity to do right and we have the opportunity to do wrong. What is your choice? To conform to the world the way the world wants you to be or to transform by renewing your mind? The word of God this word of God that I believe so much in myself, the word of God, the truth of God can change unrighteousness to righteousness. It can change fear into faith. It can change something old into something new. It is transformative. That's what this word is. You don't believe me. Rahab had transformative faith. She was known previously. And 
we all have a place that we were coming from previously. But she was known previously as a woman of the night. She was a harlot, a prostitute, a hooker, however you want to label her. But by transformative faith, that old stigma was no longer attached to her new being. She went from a harlot to a member of the lineage of Jesus. Paul was transformed by faith from a persecutor of Christians to the biggest mouthpiece of Christianity. Peter was transformed from denying and cursing Jesus to an apostle, a messenger of Jesus. The word of God can change anyone. Why not you? This is what the word of God can do, though. It can change. And that's why, and that's why our theme has changed the world. By faith, I became a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things became new in God, with God, not apart from God. There is nothing that we can do apart from God and think that it's going to work out. God says, I'm your everything. And that's what he has to be for us. So don't worry if your present status is ugly. God has a transformation program through the blood of Jesus Christ, his son who died on the cross so that we would have an opportunity for salvation, for redemption from sin. And what is sin? Sin is a handcuff. It keeps you locked down. It's time to get loose. It's time to get free. Jesus has those keys to the handcuff to let you go from that sin. Now, you don't have to go back to those handcuffs. So you have to understand that we're under attack. As a people, as Christians, we're under attack. And it's the enemy's attempt to rob you of God's blessing. That's what this attack is about. So if you're under attack, then that means you must be at war. And if you're at war, then someone has to come out victorious. So who's going to come out victorious? You are the enemy. You think about John, well, first John, five and four. So this is what victory looks like. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith in Jesus, faith in the word helps us to overcome all of these things that we may be oppressed with in our lives. Worldviews rob you. God's views give you victory. We all sin. Everyone. The mistake is trying to hide it. Where are you going to hide it? And you look at Proverbs 28, 13. He says, he that cover his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28 and 13. Where are you going to run and hide it? You can't. There's no way to hide it from God. So we can, we can lose connection with who we are by giving way to the pleasures that the enemy wants to give us. And for different people, there's going to be different type of pleasures that you're after. Some people is alcohol, some people is drugs, some people is sexual sin. Some people is just, I'm going to do it my own way. All these different pleasures come from the enemy. And as soon as you take hold of all those pleasures, he'll take full advantage of you. He's stealing your identity, leaving you more empty and searching for anything to fill that emptiness. Most often you find yourself in a community of other sinful behavior because you feel so home at home around sin. The new identity that you picked up since you lost your old one should be one that is of the truth of God. That's our identity. Our identity comes from God. He made us. Who would know better than him? Because we didn't make ourselves. 
here's the thing about God. He always comes back to look for his lost sheep. He says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And anyone that would lead his sheep astray is not a shepherd, but a thief. And that's John chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. So what is the thief looking to steal? The thief is looking to steal away your identity, your blessings, the things that you would get from God, the things that he knows he doesn't want you to have. Steal away your identity so you aren't known by your shepherd. That's what the enemy wants to steal. So where you are right now doesn't have to be your always. Listen to the voice of your shepherd. He's calling out. He said, my sheep know my voice. That means he has to be saying something for you to hear his voice. Jesus, the son of God, come back to him. And some people would ask, well, how do I come back to him? Cry out because he hears you. And this is what Reverend Foster was talking about last week. God hears us when we cry out to him. Hears us. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Make me whiter than snow. That's how we come back to him. Draw close to him by reading his word daily, filling ourselves daily with this word because this word is truth. Everything else is a lie. You will begin to see your own sin for yourself. When you start reading this word, you'll see your sin. But that's only when you walk into this marvelous light that God has. Don't run away. Look at this mess. And know that he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, it might be ugly. Things that we've said, things that we've done, things that we don't want other people to know about us. I always said this. If our sin was on the outside and everybody could see, we'd be doing anything to wash that junk off. But the sin is not on the outside. A lot of us try and hide it from each other but you can't hide it from God. And that's why he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Not only does he forgive us, he's going to wash that mess off so it's not there. That stain and that stink and that blemish is no longer going to be there. He won't leave you like that. God loves you. You are his child. No matter what mess you think you made, you are his. When I was growing up, I would often ask myself, why would he treat me so good? All the things that I've done, all the sin I've committed, why would he treat me so good? Because you're my son. I love you. And we were talking earlier in Sunday school, and I didn't say anything about it, about what some of his disciples and apostles, what their names meant. And I had this neighbor that uh, was always uh, lived next door to us when I was growing up. And he would always greet me every morning that he saw me. Prince Jamil, the beautiful one. What's up, beloved? This is how he would greet me every day. I had no idea until I grew up and got older that he was basically just saying the meaning of my name. My name is Jamil Davion Black. Jamil means beautiful. Davion means beloved. He, he knew the meaning of my name before I knew it. But God knows us, each and every one of us, because he made us. So I'm not afraid to say I was a sinner, that I still sin and make mistakes. But my master loves me enough to keep me in his fold. Speaking this, so that other people can hear it, is how we change the world. This is how we become a light for other people. Speak in this thing. When we hide it, other people can't see the light in us. We got to speak this thing to let you know this is what God has done in my life that'll cause a change in other people. So, if, if 
God's transformative faith can change Rahab, a harlot, and it can change Paul, a killer and persecutor, and can change Peter, a denier and cursing Jesus, and it can change Jamil, somebody who was a sexual deviant. He can reach out and change any of his lost sheep by the light that shines within us. But are you willing to shine that light for others to see God in you? Are you willing to tell them your testimony to see this is what God has done for me? So if he can do it for me, certainly he can do it for you. We change the world by revealing light, not hiding it. But how many of us are going to do that? How, how many of us go out there and, and express to people, this is where I I came from. This is what God did for me. He can do it for you. We can't hide anymore. We can't run and hide and let the world happen around us. We have to do something about it. We have to shine that light. This is what God did for me. Took me out of my sexual sin. Took me out of it. And this is what, this is what transformative faith is. Shows us something new. And we got that new thing to look forward to rather than stay stuck in our old mess. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's easy. Because I can tell you one thing. Even coming into the light, temptation doesn't go away. Temptation doesn't go away. The temptation is always going to be there to make sure that you stay in the light. So we can't just walk around and make excuses for why we stay the way we are. Just because you are that way doesn't mean you have to stay that way. God has a new identity for us. Everything that the world told you is a lie. And that started way back with Adam and Eve in the garden. They chose to believe the lie instead of believe the truth. Which is why we in the position that we in now. And that's what sin is. Sin is holding on to a lie rather than in truth. All we have to do is trust that God is going to have, the, have our back for whatever we go through. Like I said, that's the issue that I was going through all week, feeling like I was unprepared. And I was because he wasn't finished with me. But I had to wait on him for this whole message. That's why I felt uncomfortable. I had to wait. It was all the way up until 3 a.m. I had to wait on God for the, the, the fullness of this message to get across. And the whole week I'm thinking I'm unprepared. I'm unprepared. I'm missing something. I was. But God didn't just leave me hanging. He gave me scripture. He filled out the rest of this message. And that's why I thank God so much. Because our Sunday school reiterated the same thing. And I just wish that I would follow my own words because I told myself year a year ago that if I just read the Sunday school lesson a week ahead, then I would be prepared when it's coming up. Because everything that we learned in the Sunday school was all the things that I was going through this week. God always has us. He has our back, no matter what the situation is. But we got to learn that we have to accept him. We can grow in him. And all that starts by coming to him and allowing him to make that change in our lives so that we can be a light for others. So that's my, that's my message. but. We just don't have a word of prayer. Father God, we just ask that you have mercy on each and every one of us. That regardless of our backgrounds, that you have mercy, even on those that cannot or have not confessed their own sins, that you touch our hearts and our minds and our souls and our bodies, that we would want to and have the yearning to repent of sins and come back to you by faith. There is salvation from sin in Jesus' name, salvation from sin. We don't have to be stuck where we are. Our friends don't have to be stuck where they are. We have family members that have mingled in this kind of stuff and don't have to be stuck where they are. But let your light shine through us. All these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. And I hope that, uh, I hope that everybody got something from this message. And I just ask that you pray my strength in the Lord. 
Don't forget, you can help us continue to spread the good news by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's PIBC, Pentecost Inspirational Baptist Church. Like, follow, share, and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week.